Praise the Lord. I know what some of you are probably sitting there wondering. I wonder what those lyrics mean or what they're saying. But everybody's, um, everybody's asking me that tonight. <laughs> awesome. Hey, let's give another hand for the, um, for the team. And for the worship tonight, the, the tech team, for Manu, who put this all together. Thank you, bro. Um, so, Operation Cambodia. We had heaps of fun last year. Yeah, we, we had heaps of fun last year. It was just an aw- awesome way. For me, myself personally, it was a joy to watch everybody on the mission, the whole team. I think we took about 46, yeah, 36 from the church, but 46 in total including my family, so it was, just, it was just incredible to watch a whole body work together for the advancement of the kingdom of God, and yeah, it was amazing. Um, so just, just if you're wondering, that song, <coughs> that song is, is titled Raw Dream, it's called Sobin Chao, Sobin meaning um, dream, Chao meaning raw, and, um, and the lyrics in it, He's, um, the guy who's rapping, he's talking about his life, um, the effects of his life right now because of the past, the, the, the history of Cambodia, um, when it went through the, the genocide and the, and the war and just um, pretty much the whole country just crumbling. But in, in there he says, um, he talks, he says, Som, uh, Som Ngup Jia Kamai Chao, which means like, he, he's saying in the, in, the, in the chorus there, he says, I wish that I could live life as a zombie because I don't want to have feelings anymore because of the pain that he's carrying. And Cambodia right now, it's still in that state. It's still recovering. Um, the cities and the provinces are getting better. They're developing better, although the people are still trying to, I guess, um, heal heal from that, that past hurt, the past killings and, and, and just the things that they've seen in the, that happened in the, in the 70s. And it's, it's how, how, I'm, I'm bad with maths. How many years has that been? So 75, I think it happened. Anybody want to throw a number out until now? How many years is that? 33. 43. 43 years. 43 years. 43 years. So, that's just a bit of um, a background for you. Um, I wanted to call up um, some of the guys who went with me, which was Tepa, one, and Manu, just to share your guys' experiences um, about the trip. So, do you want to come up and... Or you could use... (laughs) <laughs> Bless you guys. Um, uh, it was an awesome time away, and um, when uh, Shentan asked uh, me last week to think about uh, tonight, um, I just wanted to. I wrote some things down, and, and uh, I'm just going to refer to them um, because uh, uh, you know we, we we've entered uh, a time or a period, not a season, because a season comes and then it ends. A time or a period covers many seasons. So we've ended a, ended a, a period um, where, where more and more uh, we're experiencing the, the supernatural uh, on, a, uh, on, a, on a day-to-day basis where people are being drawn to God and, um, and, the, and the power of God is demonstrated and experienced in our daily lives. And... Um, uh, that's very much the case um, now, and it's even more so when we uh, carry God's presence with us overseas. And that's what we uh, witnessed uh, while we were there and, um, in lots of different ways. And, and uh, God reveals himself and, uh, and reveals things in people's lives. You know, you, you saw a lot of those uh, examples on, on, the, on, the, on the clip that God reveals uh, the pain in people's lives 
through uh, words of knowledge and discernment, and God brings uh, healing uh, and deliverance and all those things, and God brings, uh, demonstrates his power and love through, through miracles and, and uh, wonders, signs and wonders. And uh, that's, what he's, that's what he's doing more and more here, and even more so when we go to places and carry his presence overseas. So we're, we're expecting and anticipating that we'll see more of that. We'll see more of his, his power, and uh, we'll see his, um, his miracles working in people's lives and changing people's lives. Amen. Amen. So um, I'll just be quick, um, as quick as I can. So essentially, you know, Cambodia 2019, um, we are looking for people um, who would be part of this team. You know, and uh, all of us who went um, previous trip, we took with us the gifts that God gave us, you know. Mm-hmm. Whether it be just uh, the helpful hand that you provided to the people there, the smile that you had, um, the money that you had, you know, um, you may have came with um, or went with gifts where you were serving, you, or you were building stuff, or you were dancing, or doing makeup, or costumes, or doing drama, or even singing. And you carried the spiritual gifts with you, like Tipper said. You know, you, you kind of think, you know, if, if you're thinking about Cambodia next year, you don't think, what do you bring? You bring all of those things. You're God's people, and you're, he's commanded us to go. You know that, okay? It's whether or not it's your opportunity. It's whether or not it's your time. And you'll know that because God will tell you, you know? Yeah. Um, he'll provide if your heart's right, if you're willing to give it all. And the team really did that, you know? Um, we had lots of stories, as you, knew, as you know, uh, some fun things along the way, but there were some hard things as well. Some of us struggled with the heat. Some of us got sick. Um, there was all those sorts of things. But beside that, we focused on the one thing that mattered, and that was sharing God. Mm. You know, uh, We wouldn't be here ourselves if someone didn't share with us. So we went there sharing God, and that's what it's about, huh? Yeah. yeah so think about, the, uh, you know, think about being part of that team and what you can bring to that team. And even if, even if you don't go... You're here, and you should be praying, you know. You're here, you should be supporting. I know you'll be supporting. I know you'll be praying. But yeah, one team, huh? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You know, um, I'm so excited about um, the next mission trip that I'm so nervous. <laughs> and and, and uh, cause it's because of what God can do. You know, it's, it's because of what God has done through us. I mean, we, <coughs> we went and, and there was a blind man whose sight was restored and he, he wept because he could see the stars yeah. and there was f- flashes of lightning. Just when Tepe had a dream, the sky was flashing with lightning all night. I saw, a, um, I remember some of the girls were praying for this elderly woman. She had a hip problem and I watched them pray and they asked me, they said, Shanson, can you go and... Um, come and translate. I said, no, I can't because I don't speak my language. But um, they had, I think, um, Tera, which is our interpreter, he prayed for, he, he helped. So the girls were praying, and then he'd interpret their prayer. And I remember that this woman, she could barely walk, but after they ministered to her, she started jumping and dancing around with joy, and she said her hip was healed. Um, and just stuff like that happened, eh? And you know, this stuff like that can happen here too. Amen. It can happen here because mission is everywhere. Isn't that right? Yeah. Mission's everywhere. So we want to take a look at mission, right? So we're on a mission. That was our, that was our um, church uh, vision statement. We are on a mission. We're on a mission to, to make disciples, to, 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 to get the, the name of Jesus out there and to bring an encounter to, to people and the encounter with Jesus. Amen? So basically this is... We're talking about um, Operation to, uh, Cambodia 2019. You know that every, every, almost every week, we go to mum's house for, for lunch. And uh, when we get there, she, she calls the village. 
that we went into in Tagal. And every time we sp I speak to them, they say, hey, when are you coming back? Because we want to learn more about Jesus. And we we've left them two boxes of Bibles, three boxes, because we bought one before we came back and we sent it. And all the youth, <laughs> all the youth in the area, they, they are so hungry for God. I mean, they're, they're, they're like reading their Bibles every day. And the thing is, they have, um, <clears throat> they have no one to teach them. But we, I know that God is greater than that. God can raise someone up to, to preach the gospel to them. It was hard for us to find um, a link over there until we left because my uncle, all that time we were there and we were leaving, we were in Phnom Penh just about to catch our, our plane, my uncle said, oh, there's a church about a few kilometers down the road. And I was like, why didn't you tell us when we were there? But, um, <clears throat> but you see, God, you know, it's about what God does. And I want to encourage you, mission is everywhere, and it's about what God does wherever you are. Amen? All right, so let's go to the next slide. Mission is everywhere. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, up at the, um, at the Hui, um, I think it was the Australian couple, they preached this amazing message about um, mission. It's in Acts 1.8. Jesus says, you will receive power, right, when you, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and he says, and then you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth, to, first in Jerusalem, and he said it like this, that Jerusalem is our homes. Jerusalem is where they are. And so Jerusalem will be witnesses where we are, right here in Purido, in our homes. And the next one was in Judea, which is the surrounding areas, the communities, right? We've got Whitby, who are our surroundings. We've got Tawa, we've got Ascot Park, wherever, right? Those, those are surrounding places. And then he says Samaria, the places with differences, the places where, where the sinners are, right? Because the gospel is for sinners, amen? I mean, we are saved, yeah, but we, we, we're on the mission to get that message of salvation out. Right? So Samaria is where the places of differences. The places of differences isn't necessarily further out. Sometimes it's right at your front door. Sometimes it's your next door neighbor. It could be the beggar at the street, right? Who's addicted to drugs? We don't understand it because he's different from us. But that's who the gospel is for. Amen? In Cambodia, they, they worship uh, Buddha, Buddhism. That's their way of life. They follow the way of Buddha. Um, when we went to the, um, the mission trip, right, we've got, say, I'm trying to remember the figures. There was about 30 families that came forward. I counted at least, um, I think it was about 50 adults that were there at the time, and so many youth, so many kids, and, you know, ranging from different ages. But I can guarantee you that when we preached the gospel there, after five days of preaching the gospel, we put forward that call. Who wants to know Jesus? Who wants Jesus to be the Lord and Savior? And almost 100% of them came forth and received ministry and received Bibles and received the love of God. And they were so excited, man. They were like, and they were telling us, man, when are you, straight away, they were like, when are you coming back? We want to, they're like, bring back a movie. They want to watch a movie. They said they, they'll hang a sheet on the house and we can project a movie on it because they want to know what Jesus is about. When I asked them, do you know Jesus? They said, all we've heard is his name. We've heard about him. We don't know who he is. We don't know what he's about. But they found out when we got there. And they're so desperate for more. Um, so we're going back next year and we're going to baptize this time. And this time I believe that God is going to provide a link for someone to to, I guess, sort of a link to that church that my uncle was talking about that he didn't tell us about. But also, another village. There's two other villages that are asking for the gospel. My dad's village, which we're going to, to the next one. And get this, it's called Kampong Cham, right? It's called Kampong Cham, meaning the province, Kampong meaning province, Cham means Muslim. The gospel is going into the province of the Muslims. And that's where God's favor is on us as a, as a whole body. It's our opportunity to take the gospel there, right there where there is the highest percentage of Islam in that place. And God, he is greater than anything. 
is our God is the creator of heaven and earth. So Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So that's where we're taking the right. We're taking it from here and to the ends of the earth. We go, we go into um, where we're going. There is no way, and no way that they can access um, fellowship. There's no way they can access anything to do. Like I asked in Kapungjam, I asked them, "Is there a church near you?" They said, "We don't know. The nearest thing is like an hour drive out, and all all surrounding things just villages and farmers and." You know, and the poor. But that, that is where God is wanting us to go. Amen? Yeah. yeah? All right, so, and you know the call was put out. The call is out there. If you want to come, come. If you, if you feel like you, you want to come and you don't know, here's a little help, right? So we're going to take a look at this really quickly. Here's a little help. All right, so, <clears throat> these are two people that I've looked at, that Jesus called for mission, okay? These are just clues, and I'll ask you to have a guess. The first one encounters Jesus, and then Jesus tells him, go, and then she goes on the mission. So that, that's a clue. The next person, the same thing, encounters Jesus. Jesus tells him to go, and he goes on the mission. I mean, they're quite generic, but if you can sort of, just sort of think in your mind, who do you, who do you think they are? Who do you think these people are? Because Jesus sends them on a mission. It's when they encounter him. Anybody want to have a guess? In the, they're in the Bible too. They're not like... Not Jesus and Shanton. <laughs> not Jesus and Shanton. Yep, the Samaritan woman. The woman at the well. She encounters Jesus... And then she experiences this transformation in, her, in, her, in, her, in her, her heart, her life, because she encounters the God's power, amen? And then she tells him, she tells her to go and call your husband, but she goes and calls the whole town, amen? amen. What about the second guy? Second guy, you can, there's a lot of, it's generic, I know that. But since it's a bit difficult, I'll give it away, eh? The demon-possessed man in Mark. When Jesus got off the boat, he encounters Jesus, and then he gets delivered from a legion. And after this, he begs Jesus. He says, let me go with you. Jesus says, no, go back to your hometown and go on a mission and go tell them what God has done for you. Amen? So if you're thinking to yourself, do I qualify as a missionary? You know, none of us do qualify. It's what God does in us. It's what God has poured on us. God chooses you and me, and then he empowers us, he changes us, and he sends us out. Go and tell what God has done for you, anywhere and everywhere. Amen? So God chooses who he wants. Like this guy. <clears throat> this guy reminds me of me, a sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen? Amen? Saved by the grace of God and then commissioned to go on a mission. So there's no real, I guess, criteria. We can put criteria on ourselves, but that will just hinder what God can do in us. Because we can trust that God will do it. Amen? We can trust that God goes before us. And so, when you think about it, you know, if you feel like you don't, you don't, feel like you're good enough to go or that you don't meet this box or tick this box or whatever, you're probably the perfect person to come because it's what God can do in you and through you. That's all that matters. And whether you're willing to allow him to work in your life, it's an awesome blessing. It's an awesome experience. Amen? So, we are all commissioned. We are all commissioned. Jesus said, those who believe... These are the signs that will follow. You're like you'll cast out demons. You'll look, the signs and wonders will follow. The demon possessed will be delivered and the, the, the sick will be healed. And it's all about God's spirit accompanying us because it's, these signs will follow. God will go with us. Amen? So, it's just a, this, I'm not going to go on for too long. So it's not up to us, really. I mean, when God calls you, he calls you, Right? I want to encourage you, don't fight the call. 
Um, and it's not, if you feel like you shouldn't go overseas or whatever, you can still get involved in the mission. You can still pray for us. You can still help us um, as much as you can. I mean, talk with the team and, and just see where God is leading you, you know? Because the one who goes, right, and the one who stays, they have the same share in the kingdom of God. You know, and it doesn't matter, like, if you don't feel stink whether you, you oh, I want to go, but, you know, but just, just go with God and just do what God's calling you to do. Amen? No pressure. I'm not trying to pressure anybody. I'm just trying to encourage you. You know, let God stir you up. Let God, because remember, no eye has seen and no ear has heard the things that God has for those who love Him. The things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Isn't that right? We're on the mission. We're on the mission here and in Cambodia and over the world. I mean, we've got Amrita that's joined us now. Maybe one day we'll go to your village in India, yeah? Sound like a plan? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, do you love Jesus? That's what we want to know. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Come and talk to the team. You love Jesus, man? Come and talk to the team. We'd love to, to, to help you and to the, you know, direct you as best as we can, pray with you. Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it's just, I'm excited. I'm, I'm just excited. I can't explain my excitement. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, so let's go, team. We're going to Cambodia uh, to the ends of the earth. We're going to the, the Gao and Kapung Jam. That, man, that, it just blew my mind when I found out what Kapung Jam means and, and where the gospel, God wants to take it, you know. December 2019, talked to the team today. And meetings, our, um, our monthly meetings will be starting in January next year. And I don't know what the dates will be yet, but we will um, let you know when, after the holidays. Amen? Is that cool? So we're going to go. I was going to do a plane thing that goes like this, but then you probably wouldn't want to come. So, <laughs> so yeah, praise the Lord. Um, there's a video that um, that's about to play. So, yeah, turn your eyes to the screen and come and talk with us after. Amen? Amen. Bless you guys.